Do you know Christ? Do you see yourself in Him? Christ is changing us every day so that we can become more and more like Him, that we may show the world how great our God is. Join me, Ben Fetcher, as we talk about this and much more every Thursday from 9.45 p.m. only on Wema TV. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening depending on where you're watching us from. My name is Ben Fetcher, and this is Beholding Christ program. This is a program that we come and we share the word of God about Christ Jesus so that we can see ourselves as we are known by Christ because our definition is only found in Christ. Outside Christ, there is no God's definition of you. And I would like us to get directly into the scriptures in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I will read from verse uh, 16. Okay, I'll read from verse 15, 16, 17, and 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 15, 16, 17, and 18. The Bible says, But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on the heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Verse 18. And all of us have had that veil removed so that we can be mirrors that brightly reflect the glory of the Lord. And as the Spirit of the Lord works within us, we become more and more like Him and reflect His glory. I was reading from the New Living Translation, but now I want to read verse 18. That is our point of emphasis using the New King James Version. It says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of God. That we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror. That is the, the key word of our program, that beholding as in a mirror. The word beholding comes from the Greek word chazak, which means to look attentively or to look with that, with that, with a desire to learn or to know what the object of, that you are looking into talks about or what it means. Now he says, we behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Praise be to God. We behold as in a mirror the uh, the glory of God. What does that mean? That means that uh, we look. You know, the word behold again means to look into attentively with the revelation. So when he says beholding as in a mirror, it means like we have been given and we have been called to behold Christ Jesus. This always reminds me uh, of a story in the book of Numbers in the Old Testament uh, uh, with the Israelites. When, God, when they were being beaten by snakes, God instructed Moses to lift up the bronze serpent. And when the bronze serpent was lifted, the instructions by God was, if you look, if you look at the, the, bro, uh, the brazen serpent, you will be healed. So the instruction was, behold the brazen serpent. And the more you look into it, the more you are healed of the bites and the pains that the snakes are causing you. So as believers, it is good to understand that God in the same way has placed someone ahead of us or in front of us so that we can look unto him. The Bible says in the book, uh, uh, in the, uh, the Bible says that beholding Jesus Christ or looking unto Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of faith. When we look unto him, when we see him, we are changed into the same image. Praise be to God. There are so many times that as human beings, we struggle, we work hard, we try our ways and all ways possible. We try to be like Jesus. We try to change ourselves. We try to become good. Some of us have tried in all ways. Some, sometimes we go into fasting, we go and read the Bible, we go and uh, do good things like we give alms, we try and uh, do good things that people can see, uh, the things that people know and see that they are good things. But that is not the way God has chosen for us to be transformed. That is not the way God has chosen for us to be changed. As we can see in verse 18, he says, when we look unto Jesus, when we see his glory, we are transformed into the same glory. Uh, I would like you to know this one thing, and my, my listener, that you who believe in Christ Jesus, you are as Christ is. Maybe I can read a verse for you. Uh, a verse in the book of First John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. 
I'm talking to you that believe in Jesus Christ. He says, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So, uh, my viewer, I would like, to underst I'd like you to understand that when you got born again, you received the very nature of Christ. You received the very nature of Christ because he m became sin. In 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, God made him who knew no sin, who committed no sin, to be seen. God is the one who made Jesus to be seen, that we might be made the righteousness of God. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, you have been made the righteousness of God. And that is to say, the same nature of righteousness that Jesus has, you have as a believer. So as you look unto him, if you want to know yourself, if you want to know how God sees you, if you want to know yourself as God knows you, the only way to know that is by beholding unto Jesus. That is why we are, we, we are saying that our work or our mandate or the instruction that we have received from God is to behold Christ. Praise be to God. So going back to our verse, uh, that was in 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I want us to go back there and see what follows. Verse 18, 2 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 3 verse 18 says, as we behold in a mirror the glory of the Lord. So what are we beholding? We are beholding the glory of God, not the wrath of God, not the anger of God, not the, the evil things about God, but we behold the glory of God. And actually, the glory of God is Christ himself. The glory of God is in his son, the son. The Bible says in John chapter 1 from verse 12 uh, that he came to the world and he, he carried the glory as the glory of the only begotten son. So the more we look unto him who carries this glory, the glory of the Lord, we are being transformed. Praise be to God. So this word transformation is a very important word for us to understand. Because uh, many times we try to transform ourselves. Many times we try to work out things. We try to pray hard. We, pr we try to give more. We try to do more, be more, so that we, uh, we can be transformed. But transformation does not come through doing more or being more. Transformation comes through looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Because our identity is only found in Christ. Well, at that point, I would like, you, uh, I would, uh, I would like to tell you something. According to Romans chapter 5 from verse 12, there are two identities that are highlighted there. And every human being is either in those two identities. One is the identity in Adam, the first Adam. The second identity is identity in Christ. So when you were born, you were born and you inherited the identity of Adam. And remember in the garden of Eden, Adam sinned. When Adam sinned, he fell short of the glory of God. And everyone else that was born after the lineage of Adam, he partook all he took from the, uh, from the fallen man. So he was born in sin. David in a place says that I was born in sin. So even us, you and I, we were born in sin and we had that nature called the nature of the first Adam. Praise be to God. The second nature is called the nature of Christ or the nature of the second Adam, which is found in Christ. So now the Bible says in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that if any man be in Christ. So what happens when you get born again, you are you are brought, the Bible says in Colossians 1.13, that he has translated us and conveyed us into the kingdom of his dear son. That is to say, you were once in the kingdom of darkness, but when you believed in Christ, when you got born again, you were conveyed into the kingdom of his dear son. Where you live now is a place called in Christ. So if you are in Christ, you are a new creation. What The qualities that the, the first Adam you had the qualities that you had inherited from the first Adam. Now you no longer have them. Why? Because you are in Christ and you inherit after the man that you are named after. You inherited from Adam. You inherited sin that led to death. That is separation from God. When you came into Christ, you inherited righteousness that leads to eternal life. And now your identity is not in Adam. 
every other man that is bo not born again, if you want to know who you really are, you need to look at Adam. Everything that Adam had after the fall, you still have it. Praise be to God. So after the fall, sicknesses came along. After the fall, man had to labor so, so that he can uh, achieve anything. After the fall, man had to go through sufferings and go through pains. But when you believed in Christ, you were translated from the identity of the first Adam and you are brought into the identity of the second Adam, which is Christ Jesus. And now you have inherited after the man that you look uh, after the man that you are in the lineage of. Now you are in the lineage of Christ. Praise be to God. He says we are a chosen generation. You are not the generation of Adam. You are the generation of Christ. So if you are in Christ, your generation is Christ. And from the word generation comes uh, uh, comes the word genes. So your genes are those of Christ. Praise be to God. So that is to say your identity is Christ. So if my identity is Christ as Ben Fetcher, I need to understand for I to know myself, I don't have to look at myself again. I have to look at him because he is the definition of me. Christ is your definition. Christ is your identity. Christ is the man that you look like. He says in 1 John where we've read 4.17 that as he is, so are you in this world. So right now in this world, if you want to know how God sees you, if you want to know who you are according to God's calendar, the only person that you have to look unto is Christ Jesus. That is why now in verse 18 he says, as we beheld, as we behold him, as in a mirror, as we behold the glory of the Lord. So what we see when we look unto him, we see the glory of God. What we see when we look unto him, we see righteousness. What we see when we look unto him, we see grace. What we see when we look unto him, we see eternal life. Because he says that he is eternal life. First John chapter 5 from verse 11 says that I write unto you that you may know. And write unto you believers that you may know that you have eternal life. For eternal life is in the Son. And whoever has the Son has eternal life. So when we look unto him, we see eternal life. Praise be to God. And he says that the more we look unto him, we are being transformed into the same image from, uh, from glory to glory. So the key word there is transformation. The word transformation, uh, if you dig deeper in, from, the, from the original manuscripts, you see it comes from the word metamorphosis. And the word metamorphosis means change gradually. Like we have, a, like we have butterfly, butterflies, how they change from egg into becoming a full butterfly. So that is the same case. That is the same thing that happens. When we behold him, when we look at him, we are transformed. We are transformed. We are metamorphosed. We are changed. We are renewed. Romans 12 verse 1 and 2. Romans 12 verse 1 and 2. Verse 2 says that be, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed. Be ye metamorphosed. Be ye changed by the renewing of your mind. So what happens is that when we look at unto Jesus Christ, we are changed and the more we look unto him, we are transformed, we are renewed, we are changed, and we become as he is. Praise be to God. So he says, we are transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Notice the, the first word he says there, beholding as in a mirror. So when we look unto Jesus, we are looking at him as if we are looking into a mirror. And when you look into a mirror, you see yourself. And the Bible says that the word of God is our mirror. So when we look into the word of God and see Christ, because actually the whole Bible, as we'll be seeing in our, in our program, is that the whole Bible is about the man, Jesus Christ. It's not about you. It's not about what you can do. It's not about your finances. It's not about you trying to become like God. It's not about uh, your church or your ministry. It's not about anything you and I can do. But it's all about Jesus Christ. So the more we look into this mirror, which is the word of God, and the word of God is Jesus Christ, we are transformed into the same image. Praise be to God. And he said, from glory to glory. Praise be to God. So this transformation is something that does not happen. It's not an event. It is a process that happens. The more you see him, the more you know him, the more you know yourself. So 
Most people are struggling with identity crisis. Most people don't know their purposes in life. Most people don't know why they exist and why they are living in this world. But the main reason is because they don't know themselves. And why don't they know themselves? Because they have not seen themselves in Christ. The only way to know yourself is by looking unto Jesus, by seeing Christ, by seeing him. Because as he is, so are you in this world. Praise be to God. So if I am given something and I am told that this is who you are. So if I want to know who I really am. I don't want, I don't have to look elsewhere. I want, I, I only have to look unto that thing that has been placed before me to show me and to define me. Because when I look at that, I understand who I am. Praise be to God. And you realize that with that, you are transformed. So transformation is not an event. It is a process. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Maybe we can, we can go there. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Romans 12 verse 2. The writer who is Paul says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I know every, every one of us, you and I, we all desire to walk in the perfect will of God, to walk in the good and acceptable and perfect will will of God. But there is a way that God has placed, and there is a way that God has planned that it should happen. And this is how he has destined or he has placed it and how he has organized it and orchestrated it for us to walk in the perfect will of God. Number one, we should not conform to the patterns of this world, but we should be transformed. And how are we transformed? By the renewing of our minds. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. So our minds are being, so transformation comes when our minds are being transformed. So as we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 about being transformed by looking unto him. So when look, what happens when we look unto him is that our minds are transformed. We are changed and we start thinking like he sees us. We start thinking like he talks about us. We start seeing ourselves like he sees us. But the Bible says in Proverbs 23 verse 7 that as a man thinketh, so is he. So the only way to change a man is by changing his pattern of thinking. It's by changing his way of thinking, his attitude, his, uh, his uh, way of seeing things. So what happens is that God's way of changing us is by think, changing our thought patterns. And how does he change our thought patterns? by looking unto Jesus, when we look unto him. Because God's way of change is not by us changing. God's way of change is through exchange. Let me repeat that. God's way of change is not by us changing, but God's way of change is through exchange. The Bible talks about Jesus becoming sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Jesus becoming poor, that we might be made rich. The Bible talks about Jesus suffering, that we may share or be partakers of his glory. The Bible talks about Jesus carrying our sicknesses, that we may receive his wholeness and his healing. So, what does that mean? That, this is to say that the more we see him, the more we see him as he is and for what he is, the more we see ourselves in him. Now, Jesus is righteous. When we look unto him, we see his righteousness. And when we see that righteousness, that same righteousness is the same that he has given unto us. So we behold his righteousness and we walk in righteousness because that his righteousness is what defines us. So we are not righteous because we try to become righteous. We are not righteous because we try to pray hard so that we can become righteous. We are righteous because in him we have been made righteous by believing and receiving him who is our righteousness. So as we look unto him who is our righteousness, we are transformed into the same image. So our minds are changed. We stop seeing ourselves as sinners. We stop seeing ourselves as sick people. We stop seeing ourselves as losers. We, uh, we stop seeing ourselves as 
as people who are condemned, as people who have no God, as people who have no direction. And we start seeing ourselves as the righteousness of God. We start seeing ourselves as the peculiar people, as the holy nation, as a chosen generation. And the more we see ourselves as he sees us, the more our minds are changed. And as a man thinketh, so is he. So when our minds are changed, we start living a different kind of life. That is why he says we are transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Praise be to God. So he says in Romans 12 verse 2, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So my brother and my sister, what is happening is this, that our focus should not be anything else, but our focus should be Christ. When you are in sickness, don't focus on that sickness. Focus on Christ. When you are in pain, don't focus on that pain. Focus on Christ because he took away your sicknesses. He took away your pains. He took away your sins. He took away everything that was of you so that he can give you his wholeness and his completeness. Again, I read a verse in the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 1. The Bible says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand hand of the throne of God. Praise be to God. This is a, an admonition or uh, an exhortation from Apostle Paul. I believe the, who, he's the one who wrote this part of Hebrews. And he says that we, our focus is to look unto Jesus. Praise be to God. Our focus is to see him who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Let me tell you, there is nothing of God that can be found outside Christ. There is nothing that is divinely purposed and divinely set for you that is outside Christ. Praise be to God. Outside Christ, there is no God's purpose for you. Outside Christ, there is no God's identity for you. Outside Christ, there is no God's healing for you. Outside Christ, there is no God's righteousness for you. Outside Christ, there is no God's restoration, God's power for you. It's all found in Christ. That is why the writer is saying, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So even faith, Jesus is the author and the finisher. Uh, there is something I know about write, writing, those people who write books and those who author books and the publishing industries. I understand that the one who authors is not the same person who finishes because the one who authors gives the book to other people and they are, th there is a chain of people who will go through that book until it comes to the finishing point. But he cannot be the same author and the same finisher. But when it comes to our master Jesus Christ, hallelujah, when it comes to Jesus, he is both the author and the finisher. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. He is everything in everything. The Bible says it is in him that all things fit together. It is in him all the atoms and all the molecules find their placement. Praise be to God. So if I want anything, if you desire anything of God, it cannot be found outside Christ. Actually, God has appointed Jesus Christ, as, as we'll see in our next program, that God has appointed Jesus Christ as the heir of all things. Praise be to God. So I cannot pray to God that he blesses me outside Christ. I cannot pray to God that he forgives my sin outside Christ. I cannot pray that God heals me outside Christ because there is nothing of God that is outside Christ. And the more we see him, the more we see ourselves looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So he, all this had a purpose. He had a purpose in all these things, that he despised the shame. He despised 
the shame and the pain of the cross. So that by the virtue of him dying for you, by the virtue of him becoming sin, you also might be transformed into the same image. So just like the children of Israel were instructed, this is our instruction today, that we behold him, we look unto him. He is the author and the finisher of faith. He is the author and the finisher of everything. He is the author of wholeness. He is the author of uh, redemption. He is the author of of salvation. He is the author of everything. He, the, uh, the John, the revelator, calls him the Alpha and the Omega. What could you be going through right now? I am telling you today, Jesus is the author and the finisher of your solution. He is the one who began life. He is the source of life. He is the source of your joy. He is the source of your peace. The Bible calls him the Prince of Peace. He is called the King of Kings. He is called the Lord of all glory. He is our righteousness. He is our wisdom. Praise be to God. So if I I want, I want to be defined. The only way to be defined is through Jesus Christ. If I want to know who I am, the only way to know who I am is through Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. Verse 3 says, For consider him, Hebrews 12 verse 3, Consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Praise be to God. The only way to be encouraged, the only way to of not becoming weary is when we fix our eyes unto Jesus because he despised all the shame. He, de he endured the hostility from the sinners. All those people that uh, handled him through his death, the, the burial and the resurrection, all those people who handled, who handled him, there was a purpose, there was an end. He had a vision and the vision was to make you as he is. So my, uh, my viewers today, I want to tell you this uh, this moment that your definition, your identity is in Christ. Do not allow your situations to define you. You know, there are people who have, uh, who, have, who have gone through issues in their lives. Some of them, they have gone through sicknesses. Some of them, they have gone through poverty. Some of them have gone through uh, issues with their, their finances, with their uh, situations all around them. And they have allowed things to define them. Some have allowed their banks to define them, that you are bankrupt, that you don't have anything, that you are a poor man. Some have allowed sicknesses to define them, that you are a sick person, you are an asthmatic, you are a cancer person, you are a, a HIV and AIDS carrier, all those things. But your definition is not in your situations. Your definition is only found in Christ. So whatever you have allowed to define you, let it stop from today. You are defined by Christ. See him and as he is, so are you. Is Christ sick? If he is not sick, you are not sick. Is he suffering from depression? If he is not suffering from depression, you are not suffering from depression. Refuse to be taken uh, to the bondage of the devil because your identity is only found in Christ and Christ alone. So as, I, as, I, as we finish this program, I want to tell you this, that you are blessed and there is nothing that can change you can change that because your definition is only found in Christ. So as he is, so are you in this world. And I end with this, looking unto him who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for sparing your time to be with me. My name is Ben Fetcher and this is the Beholding Christ program. I call you blessed because indeed you are blessed. Amen and amen. <laughs>